Hello, I'm Ross. I work at Rive, and today I'm going to be talking about data binding, specifically converters. So, what are converters? Well, as the name suggests, converters allow you to convert data into other kinds of data. Let's say you want to convert a number into a string. We can do that with a converter. Let's say you want to convert one number into itself times two. We can do that with a converter. We can do a lot of interesting things. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new view model which will automatically bind to our artboard. Over here I will go to our data panel. You can see our view model is empty and I'm going to add a number. I'm going to call this number property num. Over here you can see that num is currently set to zero and now I'm going to use num to control this text run. Let's go into my hierarchy, go to the text run, right click, data bind, and now we will select num to control the text run. So if I press play, you'd expect the text run to say zero. But that's not what happens, because num is a number and the text run is a string. First, we need to convert the number into a string, and then we can control the text run with it. So let's go into our data panel and go down to converters. Create a new string convert to string converter. Now let's apply this converter to our text run by right clicking, update bind, and it's here that we can apply our converter. So now when I press play, our text run gets updated with the number. If I go into my convert to string settings, you'll see that I can round the decimals to as many places as I want or I can remove trailing zeros. Now, what does this mean? Well, basically, if your number, let's say, it had a bunch of decimal places, but a bunch of zeros, this allows you to have as many decimal places as you want, but it will automatically remove any unnecessary trailing zeros. Moving forward, though, I am just going to use round decimals, and I'm going to round it to zero decimal places. Next up, I'm actually going to want to apply multiple converters to this text run at the same time. Luckily, Rive allows you to put converters inside groups. So here we have our group. And over here in the group settings, I can add our existing convert to string converter, but I'm also going to add a new converter. Uh, let's make it a numeric calculate converter. Now, as you can see here, we get a warning. The input accepts number but received a string. This is because we are converting to a string and then trying to calculate a string. Instead, we need to move the calculate converter to the top so that we calculate the number first and then convert that number to a string. Let's apply this converter group to our text run. Go to our hierarchy, text run, right click, update the bind, and instead of just using the convert to string converter, we are going to use the group. Now, if you remember, in our view model, num is currently set to zero, but in our group of converters, we are adding one. So if I press play, we have added one. What happens if we add, you know, a thousand? Pretty simple. The calculate converter always applies your selected calculation to the property that it is being applied to. Now, this is so simple, it barely needs explanation. However, we have another type of converter that I can apply called math formula that works a little bit differently. For instance, let's add input. Now, this input does not mean an input down here. It means whatever data property you are currently converting. Then I can add an operation, add, and I can add a number. So we're doing exactly what we just did in the calculate converter. We're taking the input number and then we are adding one. So if I press play, the string says one. However, in math formula converters, we don't actually need to use any input number. We can just use a value with another value. Meaning if I press play, even though this converter is being applied to our number, it is actually overriding our number. I can set our converter to 1000 times 1000 and press play and we have a million. It has literally nothing to do with our input number. 
Another interesting thing that you can do in math formula is add functions. For now, I'm going to keep it simple and just use the random function. In this default state, it will output a number between 0 and 1. So that when I press play, there's a random number between 0 and 1. Press play again, there's another random number. However, you can actually apply a range to this random number function. So uh, I can put 100 and round the decimals, and it will now show a random number between 0 and 100. But what if you want a range between one number and another number? Well, just have two numbers separated by a comma, and that will give you a random number in between those two numbers. It should be noted that you cannot activate this converter again to apply a new random number to this number property unless you restart the state machine. When you pick your random number, that random number is set in stone until you restart the state machine. Now, I'm just going to remove our math formula from our group so that all the group is doing is converting that number to a string. So if I press play, the number is zero again. But now I'm going to show you how to apply our calculate converter to add one to this number incrementally. This starts with an event, and I'll call this event increment. And I'm going to go into my timeline and fire this event at the beginning. I'm going to change the timeline to a loop so that we are firing the event once every second. Then I'm going to create a listener to listen to our increment event. And then whenever we fire the event, I'm going to perform a view model change. This basically allows you to set the number property to either a value when the event fires, or you can set it to itself with a converter applied. I'm going to apply our calculate converter, which is currently set to add one. So now whenever the event fires, we are adding one to the number. Press play. And now for the final converter in this tutorial, I'm just going to delete the event. Yes. And delete this listener. And then go to my converter group and add a new numeric time based interpolator and move it to the top and then set it to 500 milliseconds and then press play. I can change my number from zero to let's say 100. And when I tap enter, Instead of changing instantly, the value data is interpolating over 500 milliseconds.